David Nieleman joins us now from Sao Paulo, Brazil, to tell us more about the airline industry and his latest venture. David Nieleman, welcome to Bloomberg. Tell us why you're in Brazil. You've been building an airline industry there as well. Well, I was, I was born here. Uh, my dad was a journalist down here. Uh, I was born in 1959, late 59. And uh, I always have loved this country. And I have dual citizenship, which really comes in handy. So when I, the board kind of decided I needed to take a more strategic role at JetBlue and be on the chairman of the board only, I was bored after a year. So I came down here and visited and thought, wow, this is a great opportunity. I always wanted to come back to the place I was born. And I speak Portuguese. And so it's, it's been a great adventure. I brought about 10 people with me from JetBlue that are doing a great job, that are helping build the airline. And, you know, we're on track to do about a billion in sales in our third year. So we're up to, we'll have, we'll have a, you know, uh, I think 46 or 47 airplanes, 48 airplanes by the end of the year. So we're, we're doing well. What about the infrastructure in the country in order to support a growing aviation industry? Is it there? Yeah, you know, it's here. Uh, you know, there's, we, we need to utilize what we have better, and so we're, we're trying to help uh, Inferaro, you know, understand that. Uh, there's some temporary solutions we can do with some temporary terminals like we've done at JetBlue uh, in some of our terminals there. Um, there's also uh, some long-term solutions, and there's plenty of land, plenty of money, uh, plenty of know-how in the world to do it. So we're, we're working on it. And thank goodness we have the World Cup coming here to kind of put a little pressure on people to kind of move a little quicker. So because the, the, the market here is growing at a rate of about 25% a year. So we really need infrastructure, but it's, it, can, it can get done. What kinds of ventures, what kinds of partnerships are you building in the country in order to boost all that traffic and take advantage of it? Well, you know, I don't know about partnerships, but we're, we have the Embraer airplanes that are made here, so that's great. Uh, we fly a lot of routes that people haven't flown before. About half of our routes were the only nonstop that exists. You would have had to make a connection uh, to go between these routes before we came along. Uh, you know, in about half of our routes, we really dominate with frequency. We can fly more flights than our competitors fly because we have lower trip costs. So we're really stimulating the market. We're actually created a large, uh, a bigger range of fares. We have our lowest fares are, are either at or below the bus fares. So people can fly where they used to have to take the bus, um, which are buses are pretty expensive here with like most things here in Brazil. So it's just generating a new market, getting people to fly more often, getting people to fly who haven't flown before. And it's pretty, pretty exciting to, to watch uh, the, the evolution of the industry down here. Uh, David Nieleman, some questions uh, from your followers on Facebook. They've written into the Bloomberg Facebook page. They want to know, for example, all right, if they want to be a chief executive before the age of 30, he's already got his MBA, he's a student, and he wants to know what advice would you have if you want to be the CEO before you've attained that lofty age of 30? Uh, start your own company <laughs> and make yourself the CEO and start your own company. That's what I did. Uh, you know, it, it's, uh, and then you say, where do I get the money from? Well, you need experience. Uh, you know, once I, I, I did Morris Air, uh, when I actually dropped out of college to start my own company, it failed. June Morris picked me up. And then we started Morris Air together. And uh, it was a great experience. Uh, we sold it to Southwest when I was 30, I think 32 or 33. Uh, but it was a great teacher for me, and, and uh, I learned a lot. And once I had that success, then it was easy for me to raise money for, for JetBlue. I was involved at WestJet and then raised money for JetBlue and Azul. So once you have that experience and you have a track record, then you know, money can, can, come, can come quite easily. David, another, get that another Facebook question. Uh, they, what they'd like to know is what sparked your interest in the airline industry to begin with? I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if I have a mental illness or something. It's, it's a really tough business. But, you know, it's just an industry that uh, it's exciting. And a lot of people want to be in the airline business. Uh, and, and, you know, Warren Buffett said the best way to make a billionaire out of a millionaire is to go start an airline. So, you know, I, I'm, lot, very few people have been successful in the business. But it, it's really an industry that I'm an innovator. I like to do things differently. And it was an industry that really cried out for innovation when I started my first airline. All right. Well, what were the biggest problems you faced while you were in the startup phase? And how did you maintain a positive attitude? Well, I, which startup phase? You know, I've had in, so well, many you've times. got a lot of them. You can, you can select your own. 
Well, you know, I, I, when you have a, a, you know, I have my strengths and weaknesses. You know, one of the strengths that I have is that I can visualize things uh, before they ever take place. And so I visualized JetBlue in, in New York, bringing low fares to New Yorkers. You know, I went to this terminal right. that was available. Nobody was using it. And I said, I, I want to start flying out of here. And, and I got all kinds of roadblocks. Uh, you'll I'll, fail. You'll we got to leave it that, there. So. David Neeleman, Chief Executive okay. of Azul Airlines and the focus of risk takers.